Hi, thanks for tuning in. I'm Paul Chartier and this is Heart of Gold. We have Amy Soner on from Bluegrass Pride. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me. This is long overdue. You've won some awards through different organizations. Mm -hmm. For people that don't know Bluegrass Pride, what do you do? Well, we've been around for 11 years. We serve Central Kentucky, so I'm hoping that we are, are, we've sort of uh, spread our message as far as we can, and this is a really good opportunity for us to get it to even farther. Um, Bluegrass Pride is an environmental education and outreach organization. We work with K-12 schools. We work with um, educating the public about water uh, quality improvements. We work with energy efficiency and also waste reduction, including recycling and composting. We try and help people understand that there are small things that they can do that can make a really big impact on our local environment. We really work on, we concentrate on Central Kentucky. Name some of the small things that they can do. <laughs> sure, absolutely. Um, first of all, one of the residential programs we have is an energy efficiency program. And we have really interesting ways that people can understand how they can help in their own homes to reduce the amount of energy. We also tie it into to monetary savings in, as well. Mm -hmm. So even though you're making a big impact uh, using less energy on a variety of, of resources, you're also getting to uh, save money in your pocketbook as well. Are we going to, have to talk about some of this fun Absolutely. stuff now? Absolutely. Yes, we can do that now. Help yourself. Well, first of all, there is a energy audit kit that you can check out from all of the Lexington Public Libraries. If you don't live in Lexington or work in Lexington and don't have a library card, you can call our office and check it out from our office. Um, but the easiest way to do it is through the, any, any of the branches of the Lexington Public Library. And what's, what, what's in the kit? Right. So that's the fun stuff. Um, we have all sorts of ways that you can this find out. This is the kit? Out. This is, this, some you of this is the You check this out at the library? Absolutely. Okay. And it's free to check it out. Okay. Um, there's all sorts of things that you can do. So one of the most exciting things is a laser thermometer and this is fun if you have cats but it's also a really good way to assess where cold air is coming in. Hmm. So it's October, uh, cold air is coming, mm -hmm. um, you know, especially in February. You check one of these kits out and you can use your laser to find out where drafts are coming into your house. Uh, and then there's a, a whole book lit on how to fix those drafts as well. So you see drafts in your window, there's a section on it, what to do about that. So as a homeowner. What, what's it doing when you point that at me? <laughs> 98.6. Hot air or cold air? <laughs> yeah. Depends where. Okay, good. Um, we also have things, you know, one of the biggest uses of uh, energy in your house other than your, your heating and air conditioning and your hot water heater is your refrigerator. So this is a, a thermometer mm. that you stick in your refrigerator and you might notice that your refrigerator has numbers 1 through 10 mm -hmm. and not degrees. Mm -hmm. So if I tell you that your, you know, your freezer should be set at 32 degrees, that means nothing to you. Right. If your food is cold, uh, frozen and hard, you know that it's working. Mm -hmm. But you could be using too much energy to make that, mm. cold, that food um, frozen. So this will tell you what your freezer is set at or your refrigerator, and it gives you a, a danger zone and all of that. So, so to clarify for me, yes. is 1 coldest or is 10 coldest? You know, I don't even want to go there. That depends on what your <laughs> your refrigerator. I have no idea what it means. Okay. <laughs> yes, no, I don't either. I'll get that but and put this, it in. if it's blue, it's colder. If it's a yellow, it's you're in the danger zone. Okay. So you don't. Yeah. So you'll know a little bit more about that. Um, we also have things like a foot candle meter, um, and this is a, a fancy thing that you probably don't remember unless you're in fifth grade and learned what a foot candle was. But this will tell you what the light level is in various places throughout your house. So if the light level is too high, you can reduce to read. For example you need about 13 foot candles to read and often here in the studio I'm sure we're way over that mm -hmm. um, but often people have reading areas that are, are too bright so you can reduce the lighting that you have and reduce your, ener your energy costs that way hmm. um, or if you don't want to strain your eyes and you're trying to save energy you can up the but you, you still want to be able to read properly um, so that's one of the fun things we have too um, that this is one of my favorite things have you heard of vampire energy no. Vampire energy is, and it's October, so this is a good time to talk <laughs> about vampires. Um, vampire energy is something that happens when you leave something plugged in and are no longer using it, but it still draws the energy. So a lot of examples are cell phone chargers, and m my biggest example is my toaster has a lighted dial, which is a ridiculous thing. Why do I, you know, I don't need my toaster to be lit up. Um, I use it maybe once a day. So anyway, this is a, a, a machine that you, you plug something into this side, mm -hmm. and then you plug this into the wall, okay. and it'll tell you how many watts it's using. And you can use it for a refrigerator, for example. You can plug it in over a period of time, and it can tell you what the average is. It can give you an instant read, that kind of thing. So you have an idea of how much money you're wasting by using this. So the argument of should you be unplugging the microwave in a toaster oven or not? 
Absolutely. The answer is? The answer is yes, if it's pulling electricity. Okay. Some things, lamps often do not pull electricity when you, if you leave them mm -hmm. plugged in. Um, so the answer is yes. Okay. A big culprit is monitors. Um, computer monitors is a big culprit. So uh, keep that in mind. Mm. Uh, even turning off your computer monitor, it still pulls energy. Mm -hmm. So what we do at our office, and this has been a really fun thing, um, our office is, is in, in a strip mall actually, and we're separated into two different suites and, and two different sides of the office are metered separately. Mm. So we gave everybody power strips because if you turn off a power strip, that cuts the energy out of that uh, power strip. So you can plug in your monitor and instead of having to unplug it from the wall, you can just switch off the power strip and that cuts the energy off of that. So we actually had a contest between the two sides of our office to see who could save the most energy and who would remember to turn mm. off their, their power strip. So mine side did not win, unfortunately, but we are vying for this year to get to win. Let me know when the contest is, <laughs> and I'll leave town. <laughs> right. Does that go for TVs too? Absolutely. Your TV, especially everybody now has the plasmas or the LCDs, mm -hmm. or those pull a lot of energy because we, as as consumers, want when you press that power button on the remote for it to instantly come on, and it can't do that unless it maintains a small level of energy usage. Um, even if you have an Energy Star TV, uh, which is obviously the way to go if you're buying appliances mm -hmm. in any way, is Energy Star. Mm. But even if you have an Energy Star TV, you want that base level. Uh, it's still using a base level of. of electricity so mm -hmm. again you can turn it off now there's a fun thing and I didn't bring an example of one but there's something called a smart uh, power strip and it has zones on it so for example if you have a DVR you don't want to unplug your DVR because then you won't get your shows recorded that mm -hmm. you want um, so the smart power strip only turns off what you plug in in the green zone or whatever depending on the oh. color so oh. there's options for things like that so when you've got this device and you're finding out is this a cold air device? This is a infrared camera, and this is a very exciting, especially if you're a ghost hunter, you can check your walls out. Um, but what we use it for is, again, a lot like the laser thermometer to find out where there's cold areas in your house. And so you take this around. Um, there has to be about a 20 degree difference between inside and outside. Mm -hmm. uh, so summer and winter are the times best to use this. And you can, it's very fun. It's, you know, it's the, the picture that you see all the time of the red and the blue mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And you can use it outside your house where you're looking for, you know, either heat escaping mm -hmm. in the winter or mm -hmm. cold air or use it inside. Um, and it's fascinating. You can find all sorts of things. And if you've got a leak and then we get to use the fun stuff. Yes. Now this, everybody should know what this is. This is a very inexpensive way to save a lot of money. Um, I am the director of an environmental nonprofit and I live in a very inefficient home. I'm working very hard, but in the process, I'm learning a lot about it. Do you need a realtor? Oh, that's in the discussion. <laughs> no, but I have something for you in just a second about realtors. Um, but anyway, caulking can actually prevent a lot of air flow from the outside to the inside of your mm -hmm. house. And so if you see, if you use the infrared camera or the laser thermometer and you see a lot of, um, a lot of heat exchange or, or air exchange, you could insulate more. A lot of people think insulation, 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 mm -hmm. and that's true. Insulation does help a lot, but a lot of times the biggest culprit is actually the air coming into your house. And so if you caulk around windows and doors on the inside, this is something I did not know. I always knew you caulked the outside of windows and that kind of thing, but just caulking on the inside. And what is a tube of caulk? A couple dollars, yeah, you know? Yeah. It's nothing and it'll last, you know, a long time. And so we have dramatically increased the amount of caulk in our house and, and we've actually saved a lot of money so mm. far. We still have a ways to go, but mm. we're learning. Um, so people can check this out. This is a self-audit that you can check out from the library. There, we also have uh, information on our website if you want a professional to come in because a professional can actually uh, put in what we call a blower door and send 40 mile per hour mm. winds mm -hmm. through your house so you can feel mm -hmm. that air that you can then go by and mm -hmm. just, just use a caulk gun and caulk it up. We we didn't uh, talk about this. No. Is this crucial? This is very crucial. Hot okay. water, very important, especially if you have girls in your family and who take long showers, and that's very stereotypical, but I like my long showers. Um, so this is a thermometer that tells you the temperature of the hot water coming out of your faucet. Hmm. Uh, sometimes if your, wa your hot water heater will have a thermometer on mm -hmm. it that will tell you the temperature. Um, this, some, if it does, then that's great. You want it to be at 120 degrees. That's the optimum temperature for heating your bath water, your dishwater, dishwasher water, all of that kind of thing, and saving energy as well. So uh, 120 degrees, if you don't have it on your uh, hot water heater, you can stick this under the tap. This is great information. In summation, you can get the kit at the library for free. Right. You, you can't do it online. You get it for free. Um, 
this is great. What other things do you offer residents, commercial businesses, other folks? Right. So we, we this is energy. We also do waste and water. Uh, we work with schools a lot and do lots of programming in schools and throughout central Kentucky. But one of the programs I wanted to tell people about today also was our Live Green Lexington's Partners Program. And that is a recognition program for businesses and apartment complexes in Lexington. There's a sister program called Bluegrass Conservation Partners uh, that serves the other 17 counties in central Kentucky. Um, but I'm going to talk about Live Green Lexington because they're essentially the same. Uh, Live Green Lexington is a little bit more robust. We have currently over 400 businesses that participate in the program. Program, and you'll know that they are they participate because they have this decal, um, the Live Green Lexington Partners decal here, uh, and that's an, it's also on our website a list. You might remember at least last year, maybe beyond that, there was a push for people to buy from small businesses. There's Small Business Saturday push. Mm -hmm. What we'd like is for people to think about. Um, buying from green businesses as well. So yeah. we have bumper stickers that we uh, that say I shop green uh, that we want people we can give away at, at a lot of the Live Green Lexington partner businesses. But how do you become a business that is um, that participates in the program? First of all you have to commit to reduce your waste reduce your energy and then improve the water quality that runs off of your property. And who measures all that? It's sort of self-reported. Um, the the business can take uh, uh, help from Bluegrass Pride. We can we can help them assess their waste stream. One of our fun things to do is a dumpster dive. We do this for an apartment complex, for a business. We do this in all the schools. Um, and we go through the trash, a day's worth of trash, to see what is in there and then how, then we develop a plan to help you with your residents or your uh, employees on how to assess that, how to separate that out and make sure you're, you're getting rid of the recyclables and that kind of thing. Um, so we can go in and do that. We talk about uh, water quality, especially for apartment complexes. We help apartment residents understand that pouring grease down the drain can clog the drain and cause a lot of overflows of the sewer, mm -hmm. which you can picture what that mm -hmm. means. Um, and we, so we make sure that the, uh, you don't put the fats, oils, and grease down your drain. And we give apartment residents this little cap that goes on a, a, a tin can. So you've used your you know, green beans and you're done with your green beans. You pour mm. your fat, oil, and grease in the tin can. Mm -hmm. You put mm -hmm. this lid on it until you're finished, uh, until it's full, and then you throw it, throw it away, the, the grease away. I think we only have a minute left. <laughs> I mean, this is fascinating, good stuff. Give your website and your phone number. That sure. If people want to find out more, they can go to your website. Absolutely. You can find a list of all the businesses on our website, how to get this audit information at www.bgpride.org. That stands for bluegrasspride.org. Amy, this is fascinating. I know that uh, for parents that work in different entities, different organizations, they could bring home whatever they can bring home. Your family like doesn't want you to bring home like a dumpster dive residue. So <laughs> having you work here maybe is not so much fun for the family. Amy Soner, thank you. Uh, this is great stuff. It can save people money. It is tangible. Go to the library, find out more about this. Mm -hmm. Go to your website, read up on the things that you can do. Call you. Uh -huh. And this is great. So thanks for coming in to do this. Thank you so much for having us. I'm Paul Chartier. We'll be right back with the American Diabetes Association. I'm Paul Chartier. Thank you for coming back. Again, I'm Paul Chartier. This is Heart of Gold, American Diabetes Association, Whitney Sampson, volunteer, and you've got diabetes. I do. And Larry Smith, a longtime volunteer, committee member, board member, nationally known in the diabetes world. And it's funny, Larry Lexington, for some reason, maybe because of you, 
and other folks is the center of the universe for diabetes? Well, it seems that way sometimes. It does. When we go to some national meetings, and myself is there, and Stuart Perry, is, yes. we are both former national chairman of the American Diabetes Association, and a number of doctors and health professionals uh, have won national awards, people in Lexington. So I think there's a high incidence of diabetes in Kentucky, and Lexington serving southeastern, south central, and far eastern Kentucky, there's a lot of specialty in diabetes in this town. Who would like to talk about, for the people who don't know what diabetes is, level one, level two, and how it manifests itself? And I'll, I'll start, I'll talk about type two. Okay. I, uh, the reason I got involved in the American Diabetes Association is that when my oldest daughter was 12, she was diagnosed with type one. And we didn't know the difference between type one and type two. So I'll let Whitney talk a little bit more about type one. Okay. But in the, uh, the epidemic of diabetes in this country. There's about 25 million Americans with diabetes. Of those, 90% have type two, which we used to call adult onset diabetes. Uh, unfortunately now, it's not just adult onset. It's get, getting younger and younger and younger. Teenagers are getting type, developing type two diabetes. Preteens are developing type two diabetes. Uh, it's a lot of it is related to the obesity epidemic, but a, a, some of it isn't. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the, where the growth in diabetes nationally is, is in type 2. And that's where the expense is and the health care cost. And a big part, uh, the American Diabetes Association was at the table, as were the American Heart and American Cancer, when the Affordable Care Act was passed, known as Obamacare now, uh, because we're the three biggest expense centers, I guess, for health care in this country. So, Larry, for type 2, what does someone do? Do they, do they catch it? Is it heredity? And then what do they do to treat it? Hereditary, it's more hereditary than type 1, which is a surprise to some people. Uh, you should get your, your blood sugar tested. You know, every year you should get a physical, especially as you get older, over past 40 or 45. And if you have a history of type 2 in your family, you should probably start a little earlier. And usually your blood sugar you know, starts creeping up. And at some point, the doctor should tell you, hey, you have prediabetes, which is if, means if you go in for a fasting uh, blood glucose test, you know, you fasted since midnight and they take your blood sugar, and it's between 100 and 126, you have prediabetes. Hmm. At that point, your doctor should tell you, well, you need to exercise more, you need to watch your diet. And you need to lose some weight. You don't have to run a marathon. You don't have to get to 160 pounds. But you need to lose 3 to 5% of your body weight. And if you walk a half an hour, five days a week, you'll go a long way to never developing full-blown diabetes. Whitney, what's type 1? And when did you find out? And how do you treat it? Um, type 1 is uh, basically your pancreas shuts down. Um, it doesn't produce insulin for, um, for your body anymore, um, which then um, uh, increases your blood sugar. Um, at that point, a person would need to start taking insulin shots and, of course, checking their blood sugar on a regular basis. Um, I was diagnosed when I was seven years old, um, and uh, I remember uh, my brother is also diabetic, and I remember when he was diagnosed, um, it was a big change for our family. Um, but when I was diagnosed, I, I didn't really realize all the effects of diabetes on, on um, my, my brother and my sister, um, me, uh, my, my mother, my father. Um, it, it really affects everybody in the family, whether they're diabetic or not. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's a daily struggle. Um, it's livable. It's something that you can control. Um, there are days that you, um, you will have that you wake up and you wonder why your blood sugar is so high and it can be frustrating, um, but, but it is livable and it is something that, um, that people can um, live healthy, uh, a healthy lifestyle with. How many days, how many times a day do you get your blood? On average, it'll, on average, it's probably four or five times a day. Um, some days more, some days less, generally not less, but um, on, on average, four to five times a day. 
and how do you treat your diabetes? Um, I take um, what we call regular insulin or uh, uh, fast-acting insulin um, at meal time. So anytime I, um, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner, if I have a snack, that sort of thing, um, or if my blood sugar happens to be um, on the higher side, I may have to take an additional shot for that. And then one, uh, once in the evening for what we call a long-acting insulin, um, and um, and that will last through the evening um, and then throughout the day as well. And you give your shot how? Um, generally, I try to move it around because, um, as many diabetics will know, they you and you get a lot of um, spots where you have to, if you've taken your shot in the same place, it just creates a pocket, which isn't good. But um, so I try to rotate it. I can take it in my arm. I can take it in my abdomen. I can take it in my legs or in my butt. Um, so it's you know you just have to switch it around um, and. It varies. I can take, um, you know, one or two units all the way up to, um, for my long-acting, 35 units. So it, it varies quite a bit. And is it a shot? It is a shot, yes. And yes. how much is An injection. in? Is it a full vial? Um, not, oh, you mean that the medicine actually comes out yes. of? Um, well, they do have vials. Mm -hmm. um, right now I'm using a fancy pen, which just automatically it clicks. Um, and um, and it so it automatically gives you the correct dosage when, once you turn it, um, and so they're coming they're coming up with a lot of great things that make living with diabetes a lot easier, uh, and that's one of those things. Can you feel something coming on? Like what's is there such thing as an episode? Yeah, it, it can be referred to as an episode. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, I, the symptoms that I feel, um, I, I get shaky, um, I um, sweat. Um, this is when, when my blood sugar is on a downward, downward spi spiral, excuse me, um, and um, I have a tendency to drop things. I can't, I have loss mm. of muscle control. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, as my mother will contest, uh, I, I get grumpy <laughs> and irritable. Um, and uh, uh, and those are just some of the symptoms. There are many, and everybody has different symptoms. That you know, one day my blood sugar could be sixty, and I can't even stand up. And then on another day, it could be thirty, and I'm functioning just fine. Um, so mm -hmm. it, and everybody has different. Um, you know, everybody has their story that's diabetic, and what what their symptoms are mm -hmm. and what they experience. But what they usually can't tell is when their blood sugar is high. Or can you tell? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I have symptoms of high blood um, sugar as well. I, um, I get real thirsty. Um, oftentimes, um, when your blood sugar is high, you'll have to urinate uh, more often. Um, uh, I have like this, uh, almost what they call cotton mouth, mm -hmm. <laughs> where you just, and that increases your thirst. But not everybody. Ev not everybody does. You know, some people can have a three or four hundred and not be aware not of it. Feel right. it. Yeah, and it all depends on on where your normal, where your set blood sugar is. If if you constantly run at two hundred, you're not going to feel like your blood sugar is two hundred because that's where it always is. Even though two hundred is a high blood sugar, um, and uh, you know the normal is between seventy and a, about one hundred and twenty. Um, so, you know, below that or above that, um, you know, are the low and the high blood sugars. We're going to give your website so people that are watching that want to know more that might have symptoms and don't get physicals. Uh, and who would like to talk about your event that's coming up in November? Well, I'll start and then you can jump in. Uh, we, each year we have a gala. You know, it, we used to call it a black tie event, but it's you don't wear black tie anymore. It's a little more informal. Good. Uh, and uh, R.J. Corman of R.J. Corman Railroad is kind enough to let us use his hangar. Which generous is man. Very generous man, uh, which is on Nicholasville Road, mm -hmm. south of Nicholasville, mm -hmm. on the bypass. And uh, it's a, a lovely event. Uh, we, it, I think we're in our 11th year. Mm. Um, Ann Thomas has chaired it all 11 years, and we've raised over $2 million wow. cumulatively. Wow. Um, 
And it's a fun event. Like I say, it's not black tie anymore, so it's a little more informal, a little more fun. Always good food, uh, good drink. Uh, we have auction, uh, live auction, and mm -hmm. we have great silent auction. It, you know, you can spend an hour just looking at the <laughs> items on the silent auction. But it's, it's always fun, and it's November the 2nd, mm -hmm. and anyone that's interested, you know, can go to the website, and it'll direct you to Lexington, Kentucky, and whatever event uh, you want. You've been to the event, Whitney? I have, yes. I uh, volunteer at the event. And getting tickets, go to the website. Right. Call Angela Carlos. Or Angela Carlos or Lisa okay. Edwards. Uh, I think we're in the phone book, local phone book. If not, go to the, the website, and it'll direct you to the Lexington. In the last couple minutes, type 1 doesn't sound like it's preventable. Not yet. <laughs> type 2, Larry, lifestyle, maybe food. Lifestyle plays a large part of it, but not with everyone. Uh, I have a friend, you know, about your size, runs, jogs, he has type 2 diabetes. He weighed, you know, he's 6'3", weighed 175 pounds. So you never know. You never know. What's ever in you, you just can't figure right. it out sometimes. But yeah, it's, if, your fam if your family has a history, you, you need to check uh, and be careful and, and go to the doctor and, and watch your weight and, and don't be sedentary. Get out and move around a little bit. Move around and what foods to stay away from to avoid? The same thing as if you junk, had a heart attack. Junk food, you know, fatty junk food. Junk food, high fat, you know, high sugar, uh, you know, just a healthy diet. You don't have to, you know, they say, oh, you can't have, you know, she's got diabetes. They can't have birthday cake. Mm -hmm. Well, she, Whitney can have a piece of birthday cake. She just can't have four pieces every day. Well, just like anybody, right. Yeah, we're just moderation. Like, right. It's moderation. All moderation. <laughs> and in the last 30 seconds, Kentucky is like exploding with this. Right. There's so about let's rein it in. 400,000. Kentuckians have diabetes, and about a third don't know it. So the money that you raise from your event goes to education and research, research and too. advocacy. We, we right. advocate for people with diabetes right. that are prevented from working or whatever their case may be. Larry Smith, Whitney, thank you for coming on to share your story. It's good that you can do that, that other people that are watching can relate to you, and hopefully will go to the website, call up Angela, come to the event, and maybe prevent some bad things from happening to themselves. Right. So thank yes. you. Thank, thank you, you, Paul. Thank you very I'm much. I'm Paul Chartier. This is Heart of Gold. We'll see you next time, and thanks for tuning in.